The Precision Flow High VNI provides mask-free, non-invasive ventilation for spontaneously breathing patients in respiratory distress. In this video, we will review High VNI technology and the Precision Flow High VNI unit from Vapotherm. We'll go over how to set it up on a patient, alarm function and troubleshooting, and cleaning the unit. Please note that this video is specific to the U.S. market regarding items that come with the Precision Flow High VNI. The contents mentioned in the unit assembly and setup section may differ for countries outside the U.S. Your Precision Flow High VNI unit comes with the following components. A fully integrated Precision Flow High VNI unit with the flow meter, gas blender, humidifier, and oxygen sensor all in one. A power cord, an O2 sensor cell, two gas inlet filter traps, two hoses for air and oxygen, a nurse call EMR communication cable, the EMR connection is a standard RS-232 output, and the nurse call cable is a stereo audio jack. And finally, it also comes with three nurse call cable adapters. We make these nurse call adapter cables available depending on your hospital's nurse call system. The nurse call EMR functionality is optional, and the precision flow can be used without connecting to a nurse call or EMR system. Let's start by getting to know the Precision Flow High VNI unit. First off, you will notice a small panel on the back of the machine. Inside this panel is an O2 sensor. This oxygen sensor monitors the gas mixture and signals any discrepancy between what is set and what is being delivered. When connected to a pressurized oxygen source, the sensor calibrates at startup and every 24 hours while running. In most cases, only your biomed department will be concerned about this, as the O2 sensor cell only requires changing once a year. Also behind the O2 sensor cover is the unit's connectivity port. This is accessed via the hole and associated silicone plug during normal use. This is where you'll connect the Precision Flow High VNI into your nurse call or electronic medical record systems using the nurse call EMR communication cable. As with any respiratory device, we require two things to operate, a gas source and power. You will see you have an air hose and an oxygen hose. You will need to connect each to the appropriate gas inlet filter traps. These filters require changing once every six months. Ensure that all the fittings are tight and the traps are oriented downward to allow for proper functioning. Connect your air and oxygen hoses to your gas source before you turn on the device. We like to think of this as gas before go. Once the air and oxygen are connected, plug the power cord into a facility-approved outlet. Please ensure the clip is in the lock position over the cord to prevent the unit from coming unplugged. Plug the nurse call and EMR cables into the appropriate hospital systems. As we open the door to the unit, you will see where the disposable patient circuit, also referred to as the DPC, will be placed. You will notice the heating plate and other optical sensor ports within this docking area. This is where the Precision Flow unit monitors the patient disposable in regard to the temperature, water level, and water circulation. It is here that the Precision Flow High VNI also identifies what type of circuit is in the unit and locks the flow meter into that specific flow range. We will now demonstrate how to set up the disposable patient circuit. We have two types of disposable patient circuits, high flow and low flow. Note on this package in large blue lettering it states high flow setup. This kit is specific for both pediatric and adult patient populations and is to be used with the adult and pediatric cannulas. The flow range for this kit is 5 to 40 liters per minute. The other packaging in large red lettering states low flow setup, specific for the NICU and neonatal population. It is to be used with only the premature, neonatal, and infant cannulas. Its flow range is from 1 to 8 liters per minute. Both disposables allow for 30-day, single-patient, continuous use before required replacement is needed. In each DPC package, you will find three components. The disposable water path, which houses a water reservoir, pump, connections for the cartridge and delivery tube, and sensor interfaces to the main unit. The vapor transfer cartridge, also known as the VTC, which creates Vapotherm's medical-grade vapor. And finally, the patient delivery tube, which maintains the temperature of the breathing gas via a warmed water jacket to minimize rainout. If you were to encounter any circuit-related issues, please do not disassemble the faulty circuit or throw it away. Replace the entire circuit with a brand new circuit, 
and then call our 24 hours a day, 7 days a week tech support number to speak with a representative. We ask that you please return the faulty circuit to us. We will send you a no-cost shipping label with a bag, and we'll replace each faulty circuit we receive with a brand new one for free. This allows us to test the faulty circuit and let you know why the circuit failed. Use the following steps to set up the DPC. Remove the vapor transfer cartridge from its individual package and remove the four rubber covers from the pegs. While holding the disposable water chamber by the handle, line up the four pegs of the vapor transfer cartridge to the four holes in the chamber and insert the cartridge by pushing it firmly into place. It does not matter which way the cartridge is oriented. Next, remove the patient delivery tube from the packaging and locate the three-pronged attachment at one end. Still holding the disposable water path, flip it over and locate the two holes and port on the side of the chamber. You will note that similar to a puzzle piece, it will only go in one way. Line up the pronged attachment on the delivery tube with the corresponding holes and port in the disposable water path and push into place. Still holding the disposable chamber by the handle and using your free hand, open the door to the Precision Flow High VNI docking station. Coming down over the top, smoothly and quickly slide the disposable circuit into place, making sure the heater plates are lined up, and push firmly down so the DPC is flush with the bottom. This ensures that the magnet in the DPC is fully seated into the metal cup in the docking station, allowing the water to be properly pumped and circulated. When you are finished, shut the door. Using aseptic technique, remove the cap from the spike, rub the tip with an alcohol wipe, and then spike your sterile water bag. This is very important. Before we turn on the unit, we want to unclamp the water inlet tube and make sure 200 milliliters of water is flowing into the disposable patient circuit. Wait approximately 90 seconds before pressing the run standby button. If you are using a hard water bottle with our spike adapter, wait 180 seconds. When we look at the front of the unit, you will notice that there are three controls. The run standby button, which starts the unit and places it in standby, the setting control knob, which allows you to adjust the parameters, and the alarm mute button, which allows you to intermittently silence alarms and also dims the display panel. Here you will notice that the screen is blank. That is because there are three modes to the unit. Those are sleep, standby, and run. In sleep mode, the unit will have a blank screen and an amber light showing. The unit cannot be started from sleep mode. To put the unit in standby, simply rotate the blue control setting knob to illuminate the display. You will see the three parameters of flow, FiO2, and temperature. You will see that the parameters are flashing and are shown with zeros, indicating that no flow is being delivered to the patient while in standby. You will also see the corresponding cartridge indicator on the lower right hand side, which will identify what type of disposable patient circuit is in place. A blue icon indicating high, or a red icon indicating low. To enter run mode with the screen illuminated, simply press and release the run standby button. The machine will give a series of 10 beeps and will begin to power up. During this self-test, the DWP icon is illuminated. At this point, the small light above the run standby button will change from amber to flashing green. Let's focus on the light indicator above the run standby button for a minute. When the light indicator is a constant amber, that means the unit is in standby and there is no flow being delivered. When the light changes to a flashing green, the unit is in run mode and there is flow being delivered, but the unit has not yet reached the set temperature. When the light is a constant green, the unit is in run mode and the flow is being delivered with all parameters met. As we look at the front display, you will see your three parameters. All will be adjusted by the blue control setting knob. The FiO2 is controlled by a built-in electronic blender, which allows for precise FiO2 delivery to your patient. You can set the FiO2 between 21 and 100%. To ensure that the set parameters are being delivered to the patient precisely, the unit calibrates at startup and will continue to calibrate every 24 hours that the unit is running. Your flow is controlled by an integrated electronic flow meter, which allows for accurate flow rates between 1 and 40 liters per minute. The temperature can be adjusted between 33 and 39 degrees Celsius and allows the user to set a precise temperature for optimal therapy. Finally, integrated within the unit is a battery backup, specifically designed to alert the user of a loss of main power. 
heating and pumping are disabled while operating off of the battery. This feature is specifically designed for short-term emergency backup and not for patient transport or transfer. To adjust these parameters, do the following. Push the center blue control knob and the FIO2 flashes. Turn the knob to your desired setting. Push the center blue knob until the temperature field flashes. Then turn the knob to your desired settings. Push the center blue knob until the flow field flashes. Then turn the knob to your desired settings. The settings will always toggle in a clockwise manner, starting with FIO2 first, temperature second, and flow third. Unlike other devices where you have to push knobs to confirm settings, you don't have to with the Precision Flow High VNI unit. Once the selected parameters have been set, simply stop pressing the button. The setting will blink five times and the unit will lock it in. Now we are ready to select our cannula. Vapotherm manufactures eight different size high VNI cannulas for the various patient populations. You will notice that the supply tubing is shorter than traditional low-flow oxygen cannulas. The shorter cannula supply tubing is important because we want to maintain the temperature and humidity level all the way to the patient. On conventional cannula, the tubing is much longer. This could allow for cooling and condensation collection. Our cannula with the shorter supply tubing reduces that. For the high-flow DPC, we have the adult 5 to 40 liters per minute and the pediatric adult small 5 to 40 liters per minute. You can also use the pediatric small to deliver 5 to 20 liters per minute on this circuit. For the low flow DPC, we have the intermediate infant, infant, neonatal, premature, and solo cannulas, which all deliver 1 to 8 liters per minute. You can also use the pediatric small to deliver 1 to 8 liters per minute on this circuit. We also have a 22 millimeter trach adapter available, which attaches to a trach collar or T-piece. When choosing a cannula for any patient population, it is important to select a cannula that does not occlude over 50% of the inner diameter of the patient's nares. It is best practice to put the cannula on the patient to warm it to his or her body temperature. This also helps reduce condensation. Once the proper cannula has been selected and the set temperature has been reached, you may place the cannula on the end of the delivery tube. Now the setup and patient placement is complete. Once the unit is set up and running on a patient, the unit should not be placed in standby mode for extended periods of time. If you need to pause therapy for the patient, please remove the cannula from the patient, turn the parameters to the lowest settings, and leave the unit running. Please remember that the only time the unit should be put into standby mode is when the patient is completely done using the therapy and you're taking it out of their room. We will now discuss the alarm and safety features of the Precision Flow High VNI. The Precision Flow High VNI is designed specifically with patient safety in mind and includes a comprehensive alarm package. These alarms are both audible and visible. There are 11 medium priority alarms, which can be silenced for up to 20 seconds, and one low priority alarm, which can be silenced for two minutes. These alarms can be signaled to your hospital's nurse call system by using an appropriate nurse call communication cable. The first alarm we will demonstrate is the blocked tube alarm. By simply occluding the end of the delivery tube, you can see that it triggers the alarm. Flow will suspend momentarily until the occlusion is relieved. At this point, flow will resume. To resolve the alarm, start at the patient and work your way back to the machine to identify the cause of the occlusion. Another alarm is the gas supply fault alarm. This alarm monitors the gas supply to the unit. When we disconnect any one or both of the gas supplies from the wall or the Q50 compressor, the unit will alarm. Simply reconnecting the hoses will correct the problem and the unit will resume operation. If the unit is started with only one gas source present, the unit will have to be placed in standby before the second source is connected in order for the unit's blender to recognize both sources. That's why it's important to remember gas before go during setup. If we disconnect the power cord from the wall, the unit goes into battery mode. At this point, the heater and pump will shut down. However, you will still be able to control the blender and flow meter as flow will still be delivered to the patient. You will note that the indicator light is now flashing green to indicate that flow is being delivered but may not be at the correct temperature. The unit will remain in battery mode for at least 15 minutes if fully charged. It takes approximately two hours for the battery to fully charge. 
If the battery icon is illuminated during operation, that means it is charging. When it disappears, that means it is fully charged. Battery mode is not meant for transport, but only for emergency backup. To show you the other alarm indicators, we will place the unit in standby mode and remove the DPC. As you can see, three alarm indicators are illuminated. The two on the right are for the disposable water path and vapor transfer cartridge. If these two alarms are triggered, it means that the unit has not properly detected the patient disposable. If this occurs, put the unit in standby, open the door, and reseat the DPC. If this does not correct the issue, replace with a new patient disposable after you disinfect the unit in accordance with the guidelines we will address shortly. Retain the faulty disposable and contact Vapotherm Technical Support. The alarm indicator on the left is the water out alarm. If this alarm is triggered, it means the DPC has run completely dry of water. At this point, the unit will no longer heat or pump water. However, flow will continue to be delivered to the patient. If this happens, clamp off the water inlet, put the unit in standby, replace the water bag, and allow water to fill the disposable as previously described during the initial startup. If you see two dashes in the flow and FiO2 display, this indicates that the O2 cell needs to be replaced at the back of the unit. This can be done in-house at the hospital. If a new O2 cell does not resolve the problem, call Vapotherm Technical Support to receive further instructions. Once the therapy has been discontinued, we can remove it from the patient and prepare for the next patient. To do that, follow these steps. Remove the cannula from the patient. Place the unit in standby by pushing and holding the Run Standby button for two seconds. Clamp the water spike. Open the Precision Flow High VNI door and lift out the disposable patient circuit, while at the same time removing the sterile water bag from the top of the IV pole. Discard the entire disposable patient circuit, from the cannula to the sterile water bag. Yes, this includes the water supply. Throw it away. Using a super sani cloth, or another approved cleaning solution if hospital procedures require, wipe down the internal docking station and the Precision Flow High VNI unit. You have now cleaned the device and are ready for the next patient. For any questions, please visit us at www.vapotherm.com. If you don't find the answer to your question on our website, please reach out to us directly. We look forward to helping you help your patients take the work out of breathing.